Hello again, this is a chapter 2 video. Um, in this um, video, we're going to look at class structure um, and the internal view of a class, um, class and with specific reference to the naive ticket machine. Okay, so um, in the previous video, we looked at um, black box testing or looking really into um, the external view of a class and to what it does um, uh, from an external perspective without looking at the code. If you want to fix or improve it, um, then we have to look inside the code. Um, and this is also known as clear box um, or white box testing, so actually the looking into the code or the application to see um, what it looks like. Um, now, all Java classes will have a similar looking internal view. They might be very different, but the structure um, will be the same. And the structure looks something like this. Um, you'll have the name of the class, um, and uh, you'll have the keyword um, access modifier public or private. Um, you'll then have the keyword class um, and then you'll have the name of your class. So for us it's our naive, I think it's just ticket machine for our class name uh, for the one we're looking at. You'll then have an open brace so that type of character there which is um, the, uh, the character next to the P on the keyboard uh, on a standard keyboard and we're going to call those braces from now on. So you'll have an open brace You'll then have your fields, your constructors, and your methods, and your closed closed brace. Now we've already been introduced to fields, constructors, and methods from an external view, and we're going to look in into the class now to see what they look like internally. Um, so that's the basic view of how the class looks. Um, it, you can ignore the public part of the access modifier. We're going to cover that. Um, in later slides. So let's have a look at the internal view of the naive ticket machine. So here's our ticket machine. Um, I'm just going to reset the virtual Java virtual machine. You can do a control shift R to do this, um, otherwise we can just reset it. Um, and let's just dive into the ticket machine. So here we have the ticket machine. Um, have a look at our structure. Um, before you look at any piece of code or any class, I want you to start, start to get used to having a look at this top section here. Anything in blue is commented out in Java, um, or in BlueJ, which means that the, the, pro or the, the compiler doesn't look at it. You can create commented out code by doing a forward slash star, and then ending with a star forward slash as shown there. Um, that's commented out code. So let's have a look at our class structure. Again, we've got public class ticket machine um, as as before, um, with the, the class keyword and the public keyword, and then the name of the ticket machine there. And notice that the class name always starts with a capital letter, and any new words will have a capital letter in them. The fields, now you already know that the fields will make up ultimately the state of the object, um, and we've got three fields for this particular object. We've got a price, a balance, and a total. For each field, you need to specify the access modifier, which we're going to cover in a, in a slide in a moment. Um, you also need the type, and you need the name of the field. Another way of commenting out in Java is to use these forward slashes here. So just forward slash, forward slash, and then anything written in there will be uh, ignored by the compiler. Um, there's, some, um, there's some writing there to help you understand what each of the fields does and I'll let you read that um, so you can understand, your, understand that in your own time. So those are our fields. If you can remember from a previous diagram, the next thing that comes along is the constructor. So now the constructor um, is, is shown with an access modifier. Again, we'll cover that in a later slide. Um, and this is the constructor signature here. The access modifier uh, and then the name of the class needs to be used um, for the constructor, so in this case it's Ticket Machine. When you right click on the uh, class, you'll see that the constructor is here, New Ticket Machine Int Cost. That line of, on, on the blue J there refers to this here. So when you, um, um, when you want to create an object of that type, then you put in the parameter which is specified there. Uh, we're going to look at this assignment in, in a later slide. Uh, so there's our constructor. Um, the, all, the other things we have are our methods. And we're going to look at methods in a little bit more detail in later slides. But as you remember, we had four methods 
um, on the um, object when we right clicked on the object and here we have one, two, three, four. Those are our four methods there. So that gives you a bit of a view of the structure um, of the methods uh, or of the class. Now we're not going to go into the individual methods, that's in a later video, um, but um, we'll have a look at those later. Let's go back to the presentation and a quick consideration of the fields in a little bit more detail. Um, the field stores the values of the object as we know and ultimately make up the state. Um, another word to describe the field are the instance variables. So the instance variables will be the variables for the specific instance of an object which has been created. Um, as you've seen previously, you can use the inspect to view the state. So in our object, we create a new ticket of oh, we create a new ticket um, of that price to have a look at the state. We can inspect that and have a look at the state. That show, shows all our fields of the object. Um, some values will change often and some will rarely change at all and we'll look at that later. Now, uh, the three things which make up the fields, well the four things really, um, are the visibility modifier, the type and the variable name. The visibility modifier is used to show whether the field can be seen from outside of the object. If the visibility modifier or access modifier is private, it can be seen from outside the objects and you have to write a method to get access to that field and we'll discuss that in later slides. Um, must have a type, um, hopefully you understand what the type is now, and you've got to have the variable name. Finally, and after every line of code in Java that you see, you need to have a semicolon. In programming languages, um, we have keywords. Now keywords are reserved words which only um, the language can use and you cannot use them when you write your code so you cannot create variables or methods which are called any of those words um, and we'll, we'll introduce you to lots of keywords as we move on. And we've got the two um, visibility modifiers there, public and private um, and then the class which defines the class and then int for our primitive type of int. As we've seen the constructors will initialize an object they have to have the same name as their class. They have a very close association with the fields and some assignments in there which we're going to discuss later. Uh, and they can store initial values into the fields. Um, we can get these external parameters for this. For instance, in our case, we're using the cost as an external parameter. So when you create an object in BlueJ, this is what happens. You right click on the object um, and um, you have to put in the parameter. That parameter um, is then uh, taken by the constructor um, and in the case of this particular uh, object it will initialize um, the field of price so it will change the field of price to 500 if that's what you put in um, in the original object creation. How does it do that? It does that through what we call assignments. So values are stored in fields and other variables via these assignment statements. The basic structure is you put your variable in um, and then you equal a certain expression. Um, so let's just have a, a little think about that for a second. Uh, what we'll do is um, we've got here price equals cost. We could have, if, if we wanted to, we could have price equals 200. That's an assignment of a specific number. Um, we could have price equals uh, 3 plus 3 and then that would then give that price as 6 and so it does that assignment expression. So those are different methods um, of doing those particular um, assignments. In our case here what we've done is we've taken the parameter of cost and we've made the price equal to the same parameter of that. Uh, so going back to our diagram here, our parameter of 500 um, is then given um, as our price. And if we look at that in the code, we can see here the parameter which we give initially is cost. Um, price then equals that cost. We then do some other assignment statements where we do balance equals zero and total equals zero as well to initialize the object. When choosing your variable and field names, make sure you keep it pretty basic um, and easy to understand. You need to use lowercase 
um, letters to start the name of the fields off um, and avoid single or cryptic names, single letter or cryptic names like those shown there. Um, if it's more complicated, then you've got two options. Um, me personally, I use the uh, the top option there, which is the price of ticket without underscores. Um, each new word needs a new capital letter, so it becomes price of ticket like that. Um, um, other programmers use the other technique of having the underscores in. Um, whichever you use, no spaces um, must start with a lowercase, um, and that's how you use uh, your variables and create your variables. Um, so any questions on this, um, then let me know in the lesson and we're going to do some exercises into variables um, and constructors and assignment in the lesson. I'll see you then.